and right where you are standing the lord will honor you in jesus name and for all those following us online hallelujah the lord himself will bless you and lift you from all over the nations of the world following us the lord will honor you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i just want to give a charge very brief charge to encourage our hearts and then we'll go straight to performing the functions and we're trusting that god will help us those outside can you shout hallelujah praise the lord amen now i felt stirred up in my spirit to share with us very briefly on the power of process write it down i want to share with us just for a few minutes on the power of process i think it's a word that is very timely oh by the way all those who are here specifically to um, family and friends loved ones who came from far and near to honor and celebrate with their relatives and their loved ones we honor you this is koinonia may the lord bless you you will never be the same in the name of jesus hallelujah praise the lord i had the privilege by the grace of god to learn early in life that it is dangerous for a man please look up i'm teaching now it is dangerous for a man to be committed anything at all money honor power anointing it is dangerous when you are given anything without adequate preparation hallelujah the bible says an heir for as long as he's a child different not from a slave although he be lord of all it says but he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed hallelujah i think one of the great mistakes that we make as young people especially young ministers is that we have such an obsession for results without minding process we have an obsession we want to see results signs and wonders money miracle honor prestige but we never study the processes and one of the things that i have learned doing business with god listen is that the wisdom does not come from the result the wisdom comes through the process to the result the process that leads to an end in the kingdom is more powerful than the end itself hallelujah and so we have a habit we have an attitude of trivializing process when you see a great man the first thing you admire is the flamboyancy of the honor and you know results are charismatic in nature they compel a lot of attention from people and we all love it i mean there are men of god honored here in front there are different people honored and many of us sit down and we admire these people except for the fact that any kind of success in the kingdom that is committed to you without a track record of a dealing with god will must destroy you it's not just that it will destroy you it must destroy you are we together so we have people in ministry who want 1000 members within one year you see i i challenged the school of ministry students uh, while we were rounding up our prayer and fasting session yesterday um, i was establishing some of the prayer points and then i said something that has not left my heart till now if you really want god to use you in any sphere not just in ministry fundamentally you must answer the question of why you want everything god uh, you desire god to give to you you must answer why god will never release anything to you if you cannot answer that question why why do you want a crowd there are so many men of god who when they see me the first question is what is the secret to your anointing how can i get a double portion a triple portion whatever it is and the question i ask them is why why do you want a crowd pastor why do you want money why do you want to be a millionaire and if we are to be honest with ourselves the why is usually to remedy for the frustration of complex 
the frustration that comes with not being regarded as a success or to satisfy the curiosity that comes with a competitive spirit. Unfortunately, the platform upon which your desires are presented to God matter to God much more than the request. So I want an anointing and regardless of what spiritual principles I obey, fundamentally, God will probe the motif. Why do you want power? Why do you want grace? Why do you want influence? There are so many people copying men of God, copying business people, copying successful people. I found out it's easier to copy a man than to pass through the process that leads to that anointing. Are we together? Everyone said there is dignity in passing through a process. Say it. One more time. There is dignity in passing through a process. Yeah. A married woman and her husband, when they're about to counsel a young couple or an intending couple, the couple will watch the older ones living in peace and joy and assume it was always like that. They will never ask questions as to how they manage their conflicts, how they manage their misunderstandings, how they grew into loving themselves beyond just physical and emotional connection. They will not ask the question. When people see a multi-millionaire, they are obsessed with the car, the dressing, the prestige, and never ask the question, how were your failures? How did you manage them? How did you manage your pain? Are we together? When we see an anointed man, all we want is to package little offerings and bribe our way through his anointing rather than asking the question, how did you manage the persecutions that came with this anointing? You see, every time you desire a dimension in God, he will pass you through a process that makes you prepared to host that grace. If not, it will kill you. A body has thou prepared for me. The anointing does not just come. The body that will host that grace must be prepared. Hallelujah. The interesting thing about God is God will show you the destination. He will show you where you are and he will never show you how you will get there. Because the process is too hard. If he shows you, you will, you will quit the passion. So Joseph sees the sun, moon, 11 stars bowing to him a symbol of his destiny are we together but he's never told that he will be in a well he's never told that potiphar's wife will say he raped her are we together isn't it interesting that the moment god reveals a prophetic word over your life you would think celebration starts immediately after joseph's prophecy the first thing that happened is that he entered a well he learned, he learned the, the, the disappointment that comes with trusting men, even the closest men to you. It was a lesson he learned. You need to learn certain lessons that no matter how you read them in a book, you must enter the experience of them. Joseph made a mistake. Naive, he had his dream. He shared it with his loved ones. I saw the sun, the moon, 11 stars. They gave him the coat of many colors. He was happy. When he entered that well, he would soon learn that even your brothers can disappoint you. He soon learned that success has a side effect even to the closest people around you. He soon learned that not everything told by God is for public ears. The Bible says, and Mary kept these things to herself. Say process. There is wisdom that comes with the process. They sold him for 20 shekels of silver. That's how, that's how dangerous men can be when you put your trust in them. For 20 shekels, they sold their brother to slavery. One of the things Joseph learned is how the vanity of the coat of many colors compared to his gift. Ah! No matter what you lose around you, if you've not lost what is in you, you didn't lose anything. 
It's a lesson that Joseph learned. You can take the coat of many colors, but if the anointing and the grace and the favor and the covenant and the relationship with God is still intact, you've lost nothing. Job would learn that lesson too in his lifetime. Lost his children in one day. Lost his business. Lost his property. But what was in him was greater than what was around him. You need to learn that as you rise. Because our generation is so materialistic. We think that our success is defined by the things around us. When you're a man of God over a ministry like this and a crowd like this, chances are that you tie your relevance to these external things. The coat of many color can live within a split second. Your reputation can disappear within a split second. Your empire, whatever it is that you think you tie your value to. So that as you rise, even if you enter the jeep, you are not deceived by it. Because you know that they stole the coat of many colors in a moment. They sold Joseph. When he got to Potiphar's house, he learned that the favor of God is the secret of thriving in any environment. Within a short time, the Bible says Potiphar gave him everything except his wife. The next lesson Joseph would learn is that it takes more than anointing to rise to the throne. It takes character. Here comes a beautiful woman coming to meet Joseph. Not a fellow slave girl. It would have been understandable. But when your august wife looks at you and wants a relationship with you and she kept persuading him, can you say no regardless of the consequences? Do you have the stamina to look at a system everybody is bribing and you know that saying no will cost you your job? But you can say no. It's a lesson you learn. You don't learn it by impartation. You learn it through experience. Are we together? Imagine the shame and the embarrassment. The public embarrassment Joseph would go through. And people would look at him and say, shameless slave. A slave was a property. You were never given room to explain yourself. And there, Joseph was in a prison. Watch this. I love the story of Joseph. It's a model to the journey of success. Joseph now suddenly becomes the top man in the prison. And then he pays attention to two inferior people. Learning that the ones who hold the keys to your destiny may not be as flamboyant as you think. The wine presser, a weak man, a cup bearer, but they were doorkeepers in the spirit. When you rise through the process with God, you will learn not to trivialize people. All this committee of we the intelligent ones, committee of us who our parents are millionaires, is the key to people's stagnation in life. Joseph looked at the countenance of the butler and the wine presser and discovered that something was wrong with them. And he stooped low to discuss their problems with them. Not knowing that the key to his own victory was also tied in helping them. Not helping himself, helping them. Please hear me. It is wise to not rush your life. It is wise it is extreme wisdom to take life gradually. You would think you are slow until you meet those who claim to have run ahead of you, marking time because of pride and ignorance. The Bible says, and Dothan prospered because he prepared his way before the Lord. Jesus spent 30 years preparing for a ministry of three and a half years. 30 years of a man's life devoted to accessing wisdom. One of my most inspiring scriptures in the Bible is, and Jesus grew. Everybody say, and Jesus grew. 
as powerful as Jesus is and was, he did not become, he grew. Only Adam came as an adult. Every other person grew. Grew. And Jesus grew. And Jesus grew. And this ministry grew. And this business grew. And koinonia grew. Now that's the language we hate in our generation. We hate small beginnings. We hate the embarrassment that comes with acknowledging the fact that you are starting. So we create things around our lives that lie about the reality of what we truly are because we think we are ashamed of it. No, I'm a pastor of 5,000 members. Whereas all that is in your church is 20 members. You are not proud of them and you snap pictures of other ministries and put posters there because you do not know that the 20 people you call members are not members they are your future leaders but you have not learned that god never sends members he first sends leaders but they come as weak people like to the cave of adulam what have you learned that qualifies you to be a leader what have you learned it's not about biological age it is the same power to go through the school of the spirit i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified there are many foolish people very foolish people and the reason is because they inherited most of what they gave them so a man labors and gives one million naira ten million naira to a foolish son who does not know the price and the power of discipline and diligence and so he will waste it away that was the mistake of the prodigal son the bible says he went he says father give me my inheritance the father must have been telling them do you know you have an inheritance so he said give me my inheritance Sometimes, when you get things too cheap, too easy, you don't value them. When you get things too cheap, too easy. So certain times, it's like the chastening of the Lord. He will pass you through certain processes. Not because he does not have the ability to fast track your life. Rushing you will destroy you. Isaiah 43 verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. It says, I have called you by name, you are mine. This is what it says. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. It says, through the rivers, it shall not overwhelm you and all of that. Then it says, when you walk through the fire, you don't run through fire. You walk through it. It must refine you. There is a time appointed for training. No amount of fasting will take you out. You don't pray for that cup to pass. You pray for grace to drink it. Not everything in the kingdom is a gift. Some things are rewards. He said, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the mark. There is a scar that will make demons run away. They will not just run away because you think you are a new creation person. This is the, I think this is the balance we need to get in the body of Christ. We are so gift conscious, we do not know that there are certain things that are products of growth. There are realms and dimensions today, no matter how open they are before me, I know that my dealings with God has not authorized me yet to step into those dimensions. No matter how open the door is, I will decline. It is the dealings of the Spirit. I had a foolish friend years ago who claimed he was led to organize a crusade in one of the stadiums in Zaria here and he came and spoke to me and said he will organize a crusade. I told him, I said, let me even tell you, I won't say it in hiding. I will never support you because there, you know, it's amazing how we will do foolish things that are against the scripture, but claim we had God. And you know, we live in a time where the moment you say God said, everybody says that's your business. No, when, when you say God said, I can gauge your hearing is even in part. So your interpretation is in part. You can hear on the strength of certain levels of ignorance and think that was what God said. And when you grow a little further, you say, my God. So that thing I thought it was God was my mind. People don't come and tell me God said, and then I say, oh, that's all right. No, 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 no. God said, God is not a genie. He's not a charm. 
there is a spiritual logic to the speakings of God. The Bible says, Woe unto any nation whose king is a child. A child there does not just talk of physical age necessarily because Joash was a king at age eight. Josiah was a king at age nine. Are we together? So it was not necessarily talking about biological age, but the timings of the dealings of the spirit. This is a word for many of us. You need to suspend your hurry. God is a God of speed, not rush. And the speed comes when you are well trained. Are we together? I want to start business now and make and be a multi-millionaire in dollars in five months. I want to start. It is not about the money. It is not about the anointing. Can you manage it? There are many of us here right now. We believe all it takes. And let me use this and correct as many who are, especially we young men of God here. You know, pastor, most people think all there is to ministry is anointing. The moment you can lay hands on somebody and it turns around, you just get up and believe, I wish. If that were all to ministry, I guarantee you no man of God will suffer. Have you not seen an anointed man sit down and cry? Elijah ran away from Jezebel. Ran away and hid. And God said, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? Oh God, they want to take off my head. When Moses was angry because of the stiff nakedness of 2.5 million people, he struck the rock. Do you not know that the higher you rise, the stricter the standard of God's dealings with you? If you know that, you will not be in a hurry to rise. There are certain things other people will do and God will keep quiet as if he didn't see it. You will do it, he will deal with you ruthlessly. Hallelujah. Have you learned how to manage rejection? Have you been disappointed? Have you learned how to comfort yourself in the midst of pain? Have you learned how to navigate your way when there are no answers to your prayer? When you are typing and nothing is happening? When you are giving and nothing is happening? Do you know the spiritual key to apply when things are going wrong? Otherwise, what will you tell the members? When your members come and say, Pastor, you prophesied during our five week of prophecy program, my husband died. My wife died. I lost my job. And you name the program five weeks of prophecy and lifting. And then you are confused. Because the more you prophesy, the more they died. How do you manage that situation? I'm challenging us. It's called the law of process. Do you know there was a time in my life I asked God questions because of the pain and the challenges in my life. God never said anything. Let me tell you something with God. You can go through so much pain. You will prophesy someone's solution and never hear your own solution from God. He will, you will finish fasting over something and God will not answer you as soon as someone else comes then the gift begins to flow you solve their problem and they think you are enjoying you close the door and God says let's continue hmm. there's an army rising up there's an army rising up listen do you know there was a time in my life I think I stretched my faith and did something and someone transferred 30,000. I remember clearly that I was so happy watching my faith work. Do you know as soon as that money landed, God didn't allow me to breathe. He said I should empty like that. No tight. I should just carry it and transfer. I felt like dying. I said, oh, come on God. You can't do this. Hallelujah. The day you buy something precious, then God will ask you to go and give it to someone you don't like. God will ask you to stand up in the night and walk around. You will think you are going to see something. You will walk around for two hours. Nothing will happen. You say, go back and sleep. God, so what was it about? It's a training. 
is not what you are doing as much as obedience building obedience a time will come as a man of god is just beautiful ladies that will be coming for counseling non-stop four five months mm, you have entered another lecture you never knew you can like ladies till you cancel another ah, in jesus name ah me no i i bind you will bind and cast I know you are laughing, but I'm showing you how God works. A time will come, you are a multi-millionaire, but everywhere will be closed. God will give you stringent instructions, so everything, and then he will leave you alone. I tell you, you will fast and pray and cry and nobody will answer. All of a sudden, your heavens are closed. Not by demons, it's a training. You will fast and cry. I know what I'm telling you. Nothing will happen. A time will come. It's like all hell will break through your life. You will be misunderstood by everybody. And you'll be, is there something wrong with me? Nothing is wrong with you. God, can you arise? And God will keep quiet. Your ego will be so strong. You are praying and your hands are vibrating and God says it's the healing anointing. You come out and disgrace yourself in the public. Everybody you laid your hands on was not healed. Yet you had the gods to tell everybody a healing anointing just landed. And at the end, somebody will confront you and say, Pastor, please humble yourself and go and get the real thing. You go back to God and God will say, I gave it to you. Then when your ego is strong and it's no longer about your reputation, and you say, whether I lay hands on the whether you are healed or not, I am already dead. My, I don't have any reputation again. Then the wheelchair will rise. This God I'm telling you, that's how he trains people. This thing I'm telling you is deeper than you are just hearing it. It looks like discussion. It's easier said than done. I'm explaining to many of you some seasons you are in right now. Where you are in a season with God. Everybody is moving and God will say, you, wait. <sighs> God, what is all? What did I do wrong? Nothing. Am I waiting because of unbelief? You say no. It's even because you are the finest of them. That's why I'm waiting. That's why there's no Gary in my room. Do you have the stamina to qualify yourself for the hand of God, brothers and sisters? It is in that dark period that you will lift up your voice. With tears in your eyes, you say, Lord, you know what? I have made up my mind that result or no result, I will praise you. I will sing, I will praise, even in my darkest hour, through the sorrow and the pain. I will sing, and I will praise. I lift my hands to honor you because your word is true. Just when you thought you were graduating, you check the final results and you see three carryovers, one full session. <sighs> Lord, I thought by September I would start the ministry after graduating by July. Now I'm waiting one more year. First, you try and apply faith. You will write all the courses and pour communion on it. And go and burn it. And do every gymnastic. And at the end of it, you'll find out that you have to come to terms with the reality. But brothers and sisters, I bring you a word of hope. The same grave where people die is where resurrection starts. Mm. When you see a man anointed, it's a measure of how much he has died. It's not a measure of how much he has met people. No, sir. No, sir. You want to speak and things happen? It's not just about chasing men of God for impartation. There is a track record. Please hear what I'm telling you. It's a track record. There are many men of God trying to look for wealthy people to come to their church you don't look for them your pain is a language it calls people are we together the question i have for all of us is 
what have you learned that you think qualifies you for the next level you so admire what have you learned lord i want a prophetic grace so that when i see people i can call their names it's obtainable but are you willing to pass through they came and asked jesus they said can you grant the mother of james and john that my sons will sit one at your left and one at your right jesus did not say it's impossible he gave the condition can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism hallelujah when i sat down here i held the jimmy's hands and i spoke a word to him i said hey, jimmy we have been helped of the lord that's what i told him i remember our first crusade that is a the car spoiled by three o'clock we we're on the road crusade will start five o'clock but the car had spoiled everything to raise it's not that we could not it's not that cars finished there was no money there was no wisdom there was no nothing there was anointing we got to the crusade ground and our ladies then there were few ladies they were part of the welfare department they were still in the worship team they were still part of the counselors our ladies climbed trees to plug firewood ladies not men they climbed trees to plug firewood to prepare food fast before we rush to the crusade ground, then they will quickly take their bath and be part of the worship team. We were not plenty then. So when we call the sick out, you will go to a sick body one by one. It's not this general one that will say, if you are healed, come out. Everything you were taught will, will work there. And you know, some of those women, if they are not healed, they will tell you they are not healed. It's not young people who will say, okay, let me just pity you. Ah, is there pain? Yes, it's still there. Do you know it was a miracle how we paid for where our auditorium was we returned back they were almost locking me up because of 150,000 naira i couldn't afford it for the sound i prayed i fasted i sowed seeds i was waiting for my scholarship to come let me pay everything with it it was not up to that and several things And after that pain, six months of untold pain, the Lord spoke to me and said, next year you are going there again. That's God for you. This is, that's his voice. These are the kind of voices that you know you don't need confirmation. It is God. So then death walks in us. That life will walk in you. He brings you to a point where much more than the gift he captures your heart that's where he's going with all this journey ah, he brings you to a point where much more than the word of knowledge much more than the flamboyancy please i'm speaking to you you're my treasure my priority who can compare with you great is the measure of your royalty oh morning star you truly are everything are you willing to pass through we are celebrating a group of men and women who have spent seven months of intense training through the rain their egos have been stung i rebuke them i challenge them i watch their failures and their flaws how god began to build them some of them started some of them could not endure for various reasons but these ones have finished to the end it says better is the end of a thing now today you watch them they are even watching themselves surprised by what god has done don't envy results seek to know the process seek to know the process hallelujah let me tell you a humorous story hey, Jimmy, come. he would have forgotten i remember years ago i love him by the way so much we've come a long way I remember a time when I used to pray for people to be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
and he used to wonder how it would happen so one time i think a lady came from somewhere there's a corner we take them to and pray and he spoke to her i mean it means a good teacher you know he gave a an excellent exegesis of scripture now was the time for the demonstration i mean everything was done and he laid hands and did everything and this lady would not receive i remember we we're going back home he pained him he took it personal he said abba even god that if that lady fell down he knows what would have happened to her faith and yet god didn't see anything so when you watch him today just stand and he's talking and somebody's jumping and flying from a chair outside it's a long journey do not want a man's glory till you hear the story behind every glory there is a story god bless you sir honor you hallelujah some of you let me tell you when others are running to make money god will say they don't know what they are doing stay back for three years you may not even be worth one hundred thousand, but god is going to be working on you and you will get up in one year and make what others cannot make in a lifetime don't rush when he asks you to stay if it is god please stay there is power in waiting on god we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you i wait on you lord i wait on you i wait on you lord i wait on you believe me brothers and sisters there is power in process holy spirit you are welcome Shabarato Karabada Fill this temple with your presence Holy Spirit you are welcome Welcome into my life to pass me through the process virtuous ladies may be getting married but God will say you I know you are beautiful but wait God why now eh? my parents want children they are telling me they want to see their grandchildren God will say the problem is one child that you'll be having will be equivalent to a nation I must train you you are not training a human being you are training a system so while others are moving I am saying wait but can you wait and it's not like you are waiting he will drive all the men good men will keep coming and he will say wait let me tell you waiting is the hardest is the surest proof of maturity not praying not fasting waiting especially when god does not give you any reason wait others are buying cars he will say wait I'm showing you a message you don't hear in church again. There is power in waiting. My first scholarship that I got, remember years ago, I got that scholarship. That time there was no GTB in Zaria. The scholarship came through Guarantee Trust Bank. There was no Guarantee Trust Bank in Zaria. You had, and even in Kaduna, there was only one, just one. One GTB, no branch, just one. You would travel and go there. I remember when I collected it, I was so happy. And the Lord asked me to sow everything. I thought that would be the only time. Then, ah. may God find you so malleable. May God find you so, so non resistant. He says, The wind bloweth where it listeth. You cannot tell where it is coming. Or where is going I remember you know I was preparing happy 2010 hoping that you know at least we've served God diligently for a number of years and at least maybe relocate somewhere and you know start a greater level of work there and all of that I remember September 2010 
the anointing of God I was minding my business and the power of God came upon me and he said I need to talk to you immediately and that was it I went for a retreat and the Lord told me you are starting something that koinonia I told you about is about to start and it will start in this city I say ah God this city again have I not tried this city that's what God said and then I began to see the overflows in the visions that the Lord told me and I began to see all these things I saw people coming the Lord said this thing will make Zaria become like a place of pilgrimage I saw those things but I believed as stupid as I was believed as childlike as it was believed and to God be the glory great things he has done can you stay with God tonight and say Lord I'm no longer in a rush this craze to prove to people I'm successful uh -uh. let me be qualified based on your standard and I know you will back me all this hurry hurry in life is going to destroy us please hear what I'm telling you there is power in process some of you what you need to do now is not to open a church what you need to do is to submit yourself to mentorship and dealing go and buy books buy videos I know you are anointed that you were a co-guest minister in a crusade but sit down the whistle has not yet been blown to go don't qualify yourself based on your results you qualify yourself based on the word from God The law of process it's a simple charge we are going to pray two prayer points from the depth of our hearts number one you're going to say lord i am tired of this life of pressure and hurrying to prove that i'm successful i'm ready to follow at your pace lift your voice and pray i'm ready to follow on with your pace Are you praying? Lead me, Lord, and I will run after you. If you lead me, Lord, I will run after you. Lead me on, and I will run after you. Lead me, Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, I am ready to be led. I am ready to be led. Society will not put pressure on me. I reject the pressure that comes with society. The pressure to prove I am prosperous. The pressure to prove I am fruitful. The pressure to prove I am mature. The pressure to prove I am intelligent. No, no, no. I move at your pace. I move at your pace. I subscribe to your training. I subscribe to your dealing. They that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I refuse to succumb to pressure. No, no, pressure will not destroy my life. I will not allow friends. I will not allow my peers to push me into seasons that are not yet ordained of God. I will wait. I will wait. I will wait for the anointing. I will wait for prosperity. I will wait for wisdom. I will pass through it. I will pass through it unashamedly. I will pass through it. It may be painful, but I will pass through it. I'm rounding up. The Bible is full of people who misuse anointings, full of people who misuse honor, full of people who misuse power, full of people who misuse grace because they did not stay well in the school of the spirit. They hurried themselves out. They graduated themselves. Every class in the school of the spirit will be tested when you go out you don't miss lectures and go scot-free it's not like physical education that you can read up for exams 
every lecture every class on character on holiness on power on self-control on managing success on endurance you need the full training there is no dealing of God that is worth jumping away let me tell you something even if you are 30 years in ministry if you are ready to work with God you will go back to those classes and finish those classes you missed there is no double promotion with God you must pass through lecture after lecture and when he has tried me I shall come out as gold and when he has tried me I will be like a trophy I shall come out as gold if these things be in you and abide in you then you shall be neither barren nor unfruitful will you lead me Lord and I will run after you listen I told God something in my life I said Lord any door you cannot open for me let it remain closed for the rest of my life I have entered a covenant with myself any door that his majesty cannot open for me let it remain closed listen let God take away your ego and your reputation this issue of my name my reputation is at stake who gave you the reputation Paul said in Galatians 2.20 I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ that lives in me and this life that I live in the flesh that is the body I live by the faith of the Son of God you don't carry power with reputation you must die to yourself die to your ego oh my reputation if members don't come what will I tell people if my church is not growing what will I tell people no if after three years I don't have a child what will I tell people no you get to a point where you say Lord for me to live is Christ to die is gain I have no relevance outside of you aha that's the state you will see the power of God prayer point number two father anoint me in such a way and in such a degree that when it's time for me to rise the nations will see your glory upon my life lift your voice and pray it's all for his glory brothers and sisters all of this that we do is for his glory all that we do is for his glory it's all about you pray Jesus and all this is for you it's for your glory and your fame it's not about me as if you should do things my way you alone are God Lord it's all about you was a third prayer point oh God be glorified in my life let this quest to outshine people let this quest to be a superstar die in my life that I may decrease oh God that when men see me they see Jesus and him lifted that when men see the miracles the wisdom the power I want them to see Jesus to see
years ago the Lord spoke to me you've heard me say it again and the Lord said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you that was the condition he gave me just let men see me over 70 percent of people who have been blessed by this ministry don't know my face they don't even know how I look and frankly speaking for me it's a thing of joy oh that I may decrease that the one who sent me will be the one to increase I'm speaking to you this already is a prophetic word for someone who is hoping to climb the ladder and be a celebrity you will never find grace that way that you be lifted up. that you be lifted John 17 verse 1 Jesus spoke and said Father the hour has come he said glorify thy son that thy son may bring you glory the only reason why you glorify koinonia is that koinonia will bring you glory not a name for Joshua Selman how long do I have to live in this life to make a name for myself get away with that attitude there are many young ministers with this confusing attitude this competitive spirit wanting to build an empire I am a millionaire I am anointed it's garbage when Christ is lifted there is no limit to the hand of the Holy Ghost upon your life when Christ is lifted there is no limit to how far he will take you he will open the two lift gates of nations and give you people's prayer points as a gift because he will be glorified the source of my strength now you the strength of my life now you my hope and my joy my confidence you're the source of my strength you're the strength of my life my hope and my joy that only seeks to see you lifted that if at all you ever lift us let it simply be that you are giving yourself an opportunity to be known we bless your name in the name of Jesus Christ please be seated be seated quickly hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord now um we're getting into the graduation formality proper and um we'll just take the order we we'll have some of our fathers coming to give us a word of encouragement and then um, we ask that you please be patient with us and follow on with us before i clear the stage for one of our father to just come and briefly just encourage the students just a word of advice or so to challenge them i want us to please and please honor the um, chairman the governing council of christ gospel church pastor abubakar let's honor him thank you sir thank you so much hallelujah hallelujah his wife is also graduating 
Hallelujah. Oh yes. Hallelujah. I I want to honor the resident pastor, this great church, Pastor Tula. God bless you. Bless you, Daddy. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I just want to honor our daddy, Prof. Professor J.S. Murray. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. We're still going to honor some more people, but this uh, ministers because they'll be performing the function praise the lord i will clear the way for pastor tula pastor tula is going to come up and he's going to just give a word of advice and please i want you to listen everyone is applicable but then specifically for the school of ministry students i want you to pay attention and listen god bless you god honor you sir hallelujah Please, can we put that hands together for the Lord? <laughs> hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Amen. Just want to congratulate the graduating students. I think I was here at the first graduation, if I'm not mistaken. And this is the fourth one. I want to thank God for what I'm seeing, young men and women finding their place in life and also living according to God's purpose for their life. I, I think you will quite agree with me that um, I'm a little bit of hate. And if you ask me what is giving me joy in my life, I will frankly tell you that my joy is that I have discovered Jesus in my life and I'm serving him and not because of what I will gain from him but because of what he has done for me and I'm willing to serve him the more so I want to encourage you that what you have found, what you have passed through, guided with all jealousy, the Lord will see you through in the name of Jesus. Walk with a God. Trust Him in every aspect of your life. He has never failed me and I believe He will never fail you in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus is everything to you. Jesus is all that you need. And you will definitely succeed in the ministry in the name of Jesus. Well, I used to tell people that um, it's not my work, it's God's work. And he that has called you into this ministry, he will back you up. You will never be disgraced in life in the name of Jesus. You will never quit. In the name of Jesus. The more it becomes tougher, the more it will become more interesting for you to forge ahead. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you that the hand of the Lord will be upon you. In the name of Jesus, you will excel in life and ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity to come. Thank you for the opportunity to be part of this blessing. The Lord will see you through in Jesus' name. I also wish to thank my, I call it, he, he, he is my mentor. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I really recognize the grace of God upon his life. Apostle Salman. I, I really pray that God Almighty Father will continue to increase us. God bless you. Hallelujah. have been in a room with this many good looking people. If you are happy that God has brought you thus far, School of Ministry graduates, hallelujah! Amen! Hallelujah, it's your day. It's your day. It's your day. Um, wow. Um, I celebrate every one of you because lately God has been taking me through 
God has been teaching me on the body of Christ and the, the beautiful organization called this body of Christ. I was in um, Pastor Alpha's house um, last week over the weekend, myself, my wife, um, Aaron's wife, and we had a swell time in his house. And we're just talking and encouraging ourselves with regard to the body of Christ and the beautiful thing that God is doing. And I want to speak specifically to the School of Ministry graduates. And I'll speak from my heart. I'll speak from my heart. Um, Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2 speaks about us offering our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. How that that is our reasonable act of worship. But verse 2 says that do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but you should be transformed by the renewal of your mind. I thank God because when many people wake up to start serving God, they just assume that God is happy with their current state of mind. <laughs> and they serve him with their current state of mind. But he clearly asks us that before you begin to present your bodies, there must first be a mental transformation. Please, every paradigm shift that has occurred, ensure, ensure that you do not go back to thinking the way you were thinking. You know, it's been, it's been seven months of back-to-back -back interaction and interacting with people of like minds. You understand? Please, as much as is possible, as you, as you stop the frequency of interaction one with another, ensure that the paradigm shift you do not let go. Amen. I'm saying this because as you start to serve God in a greater capacity, it is what you can believe in your mind that you will receive from the Lord. And I'm saying this because I am greatly excited. One other thing that I would like to say, um, someone was in my house the other day and I was, I was charging him. I found something very interesting about the body of Christ. Apostle normally speaks about things we receive for personal growth and he speaks about things we receive for kingdom advancement. Let me tell you something that I have personally learned from his life. Number one was he found out what God wanted him to do with his life early. And he didn't rush to begin to deploy it. He first developed it. I want to say categorically that even as you live, that thing that God has uniquely revealed to you for the sake of the body of Christ, hold on to it. Develop immense capacity in it. What has been done here is a function of the pressing of apostle and he has allowed you to stand on his shoulders, but you will still press. So that thing God has uniquely given to you, whatever it is, it's a unique grace you are supposed to supply to the body of Christ and eventually the world at last. Grow unparalleled mastery in it and represent it to the body of Christ. For some of you, it's finances. Some of you, in the course of the training, you've come to see that God has raised you for that. For others, it's family life. For others, it is the ability to enforce the supernatural power and counsel of God. Whatever it is, build capacity in it. One of the reasons that I think God has, amongst many things, God has blessed him with is that clarity of purpose and that clarity of vision. He doesn't do too many things, but the things he does, he does them exceptionally well. Don't spread yourself thin. That unique grace God has given you to represent. When you represent Christ, it means a dimension of Christ was presented to you and you now want to represent that dimension to the body of Christ and the world at large, whatever it is. Amen. As you live, say, Lord, I own this fair. You have made me a king in this kingdom. You are coming back as king of kings. I want to dominate in this fair. For some of you, it's family life. For some of you, it's relationships. For some of you, it's, it may not even look so spiritual. For some of you, as he was talking, certain dreams, education, whatever it is, as long as it is something that is present in heaven, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Say, Lord, as long as I live and I breathe, I will represent this reality to the body of Christ. I will be a walking embodiment of this reality to the body of Christ. The third thing I would like to say is that you, you should, as you live, pace yourselves in the sense that those that you have identified that 
that carry similar graces. Let that fellowship continue. School of ministry might have ended, but you may have noticed a few of your own brethren. Let that fellowship continue. Amen. These are the three things that I would like to say to you and to encourage you. And for those of you who didn't have the privilege or the ability or the stamina to go through the school of ministry, look at them very well. God has given them something for you. Amen. Amen. They have been trained. When you train soldiers, what do you do next? They go to the battlefield. Please ensure that the grace of God that God has given unto them, whatever thing they have learned, that depth of revelation and understanding and impartation, they didn't receive it for themselves. They received it for your benefit. Amen. So make sure you place a demand on what God has done in their lives in this last seven months. So I celebrate you because the devil is about to receive the heat. <laughs> the heat from your training. And the world will not recover from the great and the mighty things that God is going to do in and through you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Um. I want to honor our mother, Mrs. Juliet Alozier, the proprietor of God's Time Secondary School. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for honoring this time. Um, Professor Madam Ladi, God bless you, ma. <laughs> Hallelujah. And every other person that is um, beyond our reach, when we are aware of your being here, we will honor you appropriately. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. Please, let's hurry up. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. Oh, I thought it was projected. Let me use my Bible. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. I read and it says, and the things that thou hast heard from me among many witnesses. It says, commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And the things that thou hast heard from me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who will commit it to others. This is the fourth set who are graduating, the fourth set of the School of Ministry. And we're happy God has been faithful. God gave us a mandate to raise and train kingdom ambassadors that will transform the world. And um, we have been helped of the Lord. And I'll just run through a few things I'll ask that will pay attention, especially for the students. Praise God. Now, the motivation behind the ENI School of Ministry is to raise kingdom ambassadors to transform the world. And this um, is by employing the principles of education, mentorship, and impartation to equip men and women who will become kingdom ambassadors. So there are three um, strategies that we use to be able to produce our students. Number one is education. That means the supply of superior time-tested information that is aimed at upgrading the understanding and the paradigms of the student. The first strategy is to give them new information, superior time-tested information. We believe in education and its power to bring transformation. So that's the first key. The second key is mentorship. Mentorship here talks of the wisdom, the alignment, and the transformation from men and women of world-class standards, repute, and results aimed at helping the students to be confident and certain and also giving them worthy references and benchmarks. One of the importance of mentorship 
is that it gives you a reference point it gives you a benchmark upon which you can gauge your progress and challenge yourself in the same so we believe in mentorship and um, we employ that principle as we seek to produce this caliber of ambassadors number three and um, i think it's one of the things that will be going into shortly is impartation the third key is impartation i wrote down something little here that i want us to pay attention to it takes more than adopting a great and superior ideology to make impact in today's world it will certainly require more than a transformed mindset as an ambassador of the kingdom to thrive and establish the purposes of the kingdom in a world whose values and perceptions are largely anti-christ and um, this is very important you must realize that it takes more than a transformed mind Ejimi spoke so gracefully about the power of a transformed mind and it has become our anthem in this place how that a man cannot rise above and beyond his mindset and his ideology however to be able to occupy your, your space in every strata of human activities and i mentioned them number one religion politics and governance education arts and entertainment family life media and the one mountain that finances them all business and finance these are the seven mountains that represent the controlling powers they are the mountains or the spheres of influence that create and influence civilization and god is seeking for men and women to occupy this uh, by the way let me just emphasize the fact that the school of ministry is not a pastor school there is a difference between a pastor and a kingdom ambassador are we together the kingdom ambassadors are raised to be able to represent the kingdom and the purposes of the kingdom in every strata of human activities and so every of these strata of human activities is influenced by people listen and systems that are openly against the gospel and the advancement of god's kingdom every one of these mountains that i listed have people men and women of influence whose lives and ideologies are largely anti-christ so the church already has a challenge by default to contend against these controlling powers and these systems that we want to sabotage the purposes of the kingdom more so the reality of the spirit realm alongside its influence on our lives and culture cannot be denied i'm establishing the premise upon which the anointing and impartation should be needed thus there must be in addition to a transformed mind a spiritual advantage an edge that lifts believers above the limitations and the vicissitudes that are associated with this system this edge is the mystery that the bible calls the anointing the anointing is a seal of authorization a divine ability upon a vessel a man that grants him or her the ability to manifest supernatural results this is where impartation comes in impartation listen is god's system for the transference and the upgrading of his power upon a man's life tonight's impartation upon the school of ministry students will among other benefits release upon them certain dimensions and operations of the spirit it is therefore my admonition that we all stand in faith with them through this most spiritual process there are five dimensions and i gave it to them yesterday to pray over there are five dimensions of graces that we trust god to be at work from today in the life of the school of ministry students number one is the grace for unusual access to encounters and the manifestation of god's presence number two is the spirit of wisdom number three is the grace for miracles signs and wonders and this this is not limited to healing miracles miracles supernatural results in every sphere that they would find themselves the fourth 
dimension that we trust that would be at work in their life is supernatural influence and access i call it the gift of men there is a mystery of influence and access and lastly an impartation for kingdom wealth prosperity and abundance so these five dimensions is what our students will be receiving they have passed through successfully they've gone through the rigor of their assessments the practicum and ultimately the exam and every one of them uh, has been able to demonstrate that they are worthy to receive this impartation it's been intense sessions of training and building and um, as we perform this function i want that our hearts be opened and let's stand in faith with them and then we'll do this very quickly and um would carry out other things and will be done. Praise God. Let me ask all the students to stand up, please. Let's celebrate them as they stand. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says, I have found David my servant, and with my holy oil have I anointed him. You have been trained, you have been built, and now something remarkable is coming upon your life you've heard me say it again and again and i've said it in the house that the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference as much as the transforming power of god is at work in and through my life i cannot deny that the possibilities that god has been able to grant in ministry and other spheres of life have been largely a product of his anointing a product of his grace hallelujah praise the lord and so as we lead them through this impartation session i like your heart to be very open hands will be laid on them every one of them and um, i will prophesy and speak over their lives we'll do this very very fast and then we'll perform other functions i want everyone seated and those outside and those online just stretch your hands towards their direction and begin to speak and say father they are stepping into a new season of grace for them you are stretching your hands on to you while on your seat so hold on please hold on we'll take it row by row and if they're under the anointing you just keep them somewhere ladies and gentlemen i want you as we have discussed to open up your heart you have received several impartations but this that you are receiving is an anointing that will do strange things in your life hallelujah father thank you because you are the one who anoints men Paul said, I long to see you, that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift, to the end that ye may be established. Father, we lift up this oil, this is ordinary oil, but I lift it up, let it lose its earthly significance, as normal oil, and become a mystery and a conduit for impartation. 
that which you have committed upon my life, that which you have put upon this ministry. Lord, let it freely fall upon your people. Let today be a strange day in their lives that they begin to walk in several possibilities. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am not as well. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare that this will be an instrument of impartation. Every grace that we have spoken over, let it come upon this oil in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. God bless you. Let's pray in spirit. Let's pray in the spirit.
want to pray and prophesy to them now. The anointing of the Spirit is upon me. Now this will apply to everybody too. But I want you to remain seated, just the students. I stand in the name of Jesus. Under this apostolic and prophetic grace, I stretch my hands. Wisdom, take it. Take it. Take it. Now, step into that level of wisdom. Take it. Grace. Grace. Wisdom. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy to you, may no man be able to stand against you all the days of your life. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you. The God that has risen for me in my life, may he rise for you. May he rise for you. Anyone that fights you, may the covenant I have with God fight them. I say it again. Any mortal man that fights you is not your faith. May the covenant I have with God fight them. It will fight them in the secret. It will fight them in the open. Everywhere you go from today, the grace to be the head, receive it. Receive it. Pataya. Help them. The grace to be the head. Receive it. I stand in the name of Jesus and I open for you the two lift gates. May kings come to you. I command it. The gift of men. Strange access. Access to men and their treasures. He told Timothy, he said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them that thy profit may appear unto all. I prophesy from today results in your life. Strange results. Lift your hands, every one of you. I pray for you. A dimension of the healing grace that you have never seen in your life. I stretch my hands upon you. Take it now. It's yours. Take it. Take it now. Strange healing grace is happening to people inside and outside too. You don't have to be part of them. I release that grace. Freely, freely. Let it be yours. Hallelujah. One of the graces that we have enjoyed in this ministry is on common access to men. May that mantle of influence and honor, may it come upon your life from today. 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 I speak over your life from today everywhere you go may the anointing of the Holy Ghost follow you men will wonder and say is Saul also one of the prophets every dormant gift in your spirit I activate it right now by the power of prophecy creativity business acumen excellence in ministry leadership You will not need to tell anyone you are a graduate of the school of ministry. May there be a sign on your life that cannot be denied. A sign in your life. I pray for you. The mystery of wealth and prosperity. I invoke upon your life the mystery of divine supplies. From today, step into the wealthy place. Step into the wealthy place. Hear me. Listen. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that the grace to speak things and see them come to pass from today may it work in your life. Yeah. 
the kind of favor you have never seen in your life before one favor finishes another one starting may it be yours from tonight as you walk around may the gates of hell shake and tremble whether in business whether in ministry whether in your corporate life may your life become a perpetual threat to the devil everything that wants to make your life barren physical barrenness financial barrenness i terminate it right now in the name of jesus hear me any cause any instrument of ancestry that followed your fathers and pegged their success i pray for you now that bar is lifted from your life go and excel go and succeed i prophesy speed in your life therefore we graduate you from the school of ministry right now in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit congratulations go ahead congratulate yourselves give them a big 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 god bless you congratulate yourselves Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. You have won the victory. Sing hallelujah, hallelujah. I just want to say thank you. Thank you get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. you get the glory. You get the glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. about the goodness and the faithfulness of God in the life of any individual that takes him seriously listen this is already a word for some people here if you pay attention to God don't play games with God don't, don't treat God the way you treat your colleagues in office or colleagues He said you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart meaning if you do not find him you didn't seek him with all your heart 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Two things very quickly tonight that the Lord put in my spirit to share with us. The Lord is showing me a barren woman and God is terminating that barrenness completely. I'm seeing in the vision of the Lord a woman that has been crying to God and saying, Lord, visit me. Why do I see the angel of the Lord outside? The Lord is showing me a vision and I see the angel of the Lord outside. The power of God is coming mightily upon a lady. Bring that lady in. Two of them. Two of them. Bring them in. You make all things new. Yes, you make all things new. And I will follow you forward. Make all things new. Yes. Yeah. Salvation comes to this family tonight. And I will follow you forward. You make all things new. Yeah. Make all things new. Yeah. yeah. Is, this is the yoke of darkness. There is a mighty deliverance going through in this family. For this is holy ground. Will you hear me now? This is holy ground. My friend. <laughs> For this is holy ground. Will you hear me now? This is holy ground. For the sun will no more give you sunlight by day. The moon will no more. Mighty breakthrough coming to this family. Stand up. Lift her up. Bring this guy. It's not supposed to be there, but let me just... Let the shofar blow over your destiny. I open up those dimensions you have desired. I open those strange dimensions. Step into a new dimension of grace. Leave him. It's done. Mommy, please look at me. Look at me. Can we talk to her? Madam, look at me. The Lord has visited your family tonight. Please look at me. Come, let me talk to you. I'm seeing sickness. One, sickness. Two, witchcraft. This is serious witchcraft over your family. Huh? That's why you keep having the dreams you're having recurrent dreams you're falling inside water they are chasing you and all of these things jesus died to set you free uh, can you hear me madam Hold on. where is your husband your finances are tied completely tied completely but i tell you madam the major breakthrough that will happen in this family will surprise you you believe that i don't know you i've never seen you who is she to you? She's your mother. Come and stand here because you have prayed. I'm seeing you in a vision praying even for this meeting. And you are praying and asking the Lord to visit your family. And, and I tell you the truth, mommy, salvation comes to your family tonight. Hold my hands. I curse that spirit. In the name of Jesus. Ah, I see something leaving you. That devil of darkness. Let this family go right now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ something is coming out from your chest what do you what, what's wrong so I don't know what is that chest is paining me that's what I'm saying because you will think they will go and tell you maybe it's um, uh, what do they call it um, uh, ulcer or something or maybe diabetes or something uh uh they said you have sugar diabetes diabetes hold on let me talk to you that's what they told you in the hospital it's not diabetes this is witchcraft hmm? this is because I'm seeing that one day you will get up and see some your leg will start paining you right you start feeling pain and something will look like a boil then it will start growing mysteriously and it will not heal and they will tell you it's because of diabetes To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Father, bring salvation to this family. In the name of Jesus, let this captivity end. I pray for you, this dimension of the spirit that you have desired, step into it. In the name of Jesus, there are dimensions of grace. God bless you. I hear the chains falling. Bring her. Hey. I hear the chains falling. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hey. Every chain. I cast this spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Bring her hands. Let her be free in the name of the Lord. Not only deliverance, but impartation of fresh grace to step into new dimensions. And the Lord visiting the finances of the family change their story in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please sit down. Let's do something. Our time is gone. I want to talk on two things that the Lord put in my heart and then we'll pray. Number one, I told us that this year God wants us to succeed. Say after me, God wants me to succeed. Say it, God wants me to succeed. My status is changing, it's no more decline, I'm on my way to better days. Oh yes, God is changing everyone's story. Status is changing, there's no more decline, I'm on my way to better days. No matter where your family has been, prophesy it. Status is changing. No more decline. I'm on my way to better days. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. The master key to attracting uncommon favor. Please make reference to my teaching, Activating Seasons of Greatness. There I teach that the key to greatness in life is favor. And I teach that there are two dimensions of favor. There is favor with God and favor with men. The Bible says, and the boy Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and men. I told you that it is possible to have favor with God and not have favor with men. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. So, I told us that the key to having favor with God, there are three things that I taught us 
I'm just recapping on the teaching. Three things. Number one, I told us is called the fear of the Lord. Yirat Adonai. Reverence. Reverence. Priority. Respect for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two, I told us our tithing. 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 I can't remember what I said the third one was. But then, I remember teaching us that when it comes to favor with men there is a requirement and the Lord asked me to recap it I'm telling you God has an agenda with us this year praise the Lord God wants to break barriers and not only cause us to be healing people and bless people but God wants to make people and families prosper are you getting what I'm saying it's a very serious issue in many families and I told you this is Bethel Praise the Lord. Diligence. Everybody say diligence. We are going to talk a bit, just a few minutes on diligence. What is diligence? Diligence is the virtue of hard work. The virtue of thoroughness. Diligence and mastery, really. Diligence and mastery. The ultimate key to attracting uncommon favor in this realm and in this system, please pay attention is diligence and mastery hallelujah praise the Lord by the grace of God, one of the things that God has helped us to understand is the balance and understanding on how the kingdom works, the components of the kingdom now we have a lot of people who leave everything all to God they say Jesus has died he's paid all the price he should come to me freely you will you will be broke and you will fail in life if that is the circumference of your belief about God on the other hand we have people who are just hustlers they want to make it by any means and they throw away the God factor both are wrong are you getting me diligence and mastery Two keys have been challenging us last um, I think it was last week I did challenge us in this light again um, what is mastery mastery means comprehensive knowledge or skill in a subject or area comprehensive knowledge skill proficiency competence Genesis 41, please, quickly. Genesis 41, from verse 36 to 46, just 10 verses. And let's look at one case study in the Bible. Genesis 41. There was a man in the Bible called Joseph. Forty-one thirty-six from verse 36 okay let's read very quickly this was Joseph now revealing and interpreting the dream of Pharaoh verse 36 says and that food shall be for storage in the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of Egypt that the land perish not in famine verse 37 the Bible says, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. 38. Can we read together if you're there? One, to read. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this in whom the spirit of God is? He said, can we find such a person? Joseph began to give an interpretation of the dream. And he said, this interpretation means there will be seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. Now, Pharaoh, here is my solution. 
find a man discreet and wise and set him over this project that during the seven years they will gather plenty and during the seven years of famine they will be able to enjoy and pharaoh said who is the person in other words he threw a challenge to the entire egypt can we find such a man if you know you are that qualified if you know you are that proficient step up no race was mentioned he didn't say if you are an egyptian or if you are a jew he said, can we find such a person? I want to bless that person. I want to lift and promote that person. But can we find such a diligent person? Such a skilled person? Such a proficient person? And the Bible says there was none. And then, verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has shown thee this thing, there is none such so discreet and wise as thou art. He was not just lifted because he was a he was a of, of the covenant and, and all of that. No, the Bible says the king testified, Pharaoh. He said, There is none, there is none who is as discreet and wise, and because of that, verse 40. Thou shalt be over my house immediately. No board meeting. No discussion. Are you getting what I'm saying? Thou shalt be over my house and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne shall I be greater than thou. 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring, a symbol of authority, and put it on Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of linen and put a gold chain about his neck. 44, 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and he cried before him, bow the knee and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Verse 44. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand of foot in the land of Egypt. Look at that. 45 says, And Pharaoh called Joseph, you know, called him all the name, and he gave unto him his wife, Asenath, and the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. And Joseph went all over the land of Egypt, the last verse. And Joseph was how many years old? How many years old? Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out of the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout the entire land of Egypt. Everybody say diligence. Say proficiency. Listen to me. The world that we live in right now, if you want the favor, favor, that's the reward system of the kingdom. The favor of God. Many people have been taught that favor just means unmerited access. I told you that you need to get my teachings, the full gospel. There I give you a balanced view of the dimension of God's grace and favor. Because I told you every Christianity that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life without a partnership on your own part is an irresponsible Christianity. Read from Genesis to Revelation. Every time God wanted to bless a man, he demanded partnership on his own part. Is that true? It's not all up to God and it's not all up to you. Your own part is to be diligent, to gain mastery. Hallelujah. I began to teach last week and I said that there are so many people in the body of Christ. They are poor, they are average, they are poor at their place of work, they are poor and, 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 and in, in, in different endeavors that they do different ministers of the gospel they want crowd they want grace they want fame they want popularity but there is no diligence no diligence no mastery right a man of god comes to stand on stage and says don't worry don't mind what i'm saying just believe that the power of god will touch you let me tell you something when you see a congregation gather like this they are a mixed multitude not everybody is a daft are you getting what I'm saying? 
there are people who walk with God. There are people who are intellectuals. There are people who are committed to making an impact. I told you excellence is a language. Those who are excellent understand the language. It calls a certain kind of people to your sphere of influence. Is God speaking to us now? God wants to prosper us. But let me tell you, our part of the equation is that we must contend for mastery. We must contend for diligence. Joseph, so many people in Egypt, the question I always ask is, didn't Pharaoh have a son? The Bible may not give us that record, but at least as a Pharaoh, he should be married. Is that true? For him to have neglected his son and to make Joseph a prize, it wasn't just because he loved Joseph. It was because if he did not exhort Joseph to solve that problem, Egypt would die in famine. Listen, let me tell you. Diligence will make men overlook your age. Diligence and mastery will make men overlook your gender. They will overlook a lot of flaws in your life because you have something that cannot be rejected. It's God speaking to us. Can we find such a man that is exceptionally excellent? Can we find that exceptional banker? Can we find that exceptional lecturer? Can we find that exceptional student? Can we find that exceptional man of God? Gone are the days where people think ministry is for daft people. You submit your CV. There's no job. They drive you everywhere. And you just say, well, since they've rejected me everywhere, let me go to the vineyard. Ministry is not for idiots. Ministry is not for foolish people. This is the wrong mindset that has been given about ministry. Whenever they see people going into ministry, they think that they have failed and they don't know what to do in their lives. They didn't give them a job and they said, let's go into the vineyard. The Bible says he gave unto one five. He gave unto one two. He gave unto one one act according to their several ability. He had tested them through time and found out that some were more proficient than others. You must hate and fight mediocrity out of your life, especially in this season of God's glory. Hallelujah. It's good to pray. It's good to fast. But you must be diligent. You must be excellent. You must do everything you do with uncanny mastery. The minimum standard in the world today is mastery. Exceptional diligence. While others are looking for jobs and crying, there are other people jobs are looking for. I know someone in this country, I was sharing with the school of ministry students last year. He does three jobs and works only three times a day. His minimum salary for one of them is 500,000. Minimum. He does the job at his terms. The day he coughs, the whole company will go bankrupt. Everybody say mastery. Is God challenging us? When I came in, I was blessed when I heard our sister's testimony about the changes that was happening in our office. The Bible says you are the light. Say I am the light. You are the light does not just mean you are anointed. It means that you are exceptional enough. Listen, the key to kingdom advancement is gaining influence. I've told you this. The weapon of kingdom advancement is influence. Because influence is the ability, listen to me, influence is the ability to cause men to buy into your ideologies to buy into your perspectives about life when you are a man of influence you sustain an ability that causes men to love your god to love your principles that's influence the kingdom isn't just going to be advanced by sharing tracts right And I told the Lord, I will never pastor a weak congregation. People who are broke, suffering, failures in life, but are just crying and saying, Lord, we love you. Sooner or later, it will affect you. When there is no food in your house, you will not be able to fast. You see, the reason is because a number of people have others who are giving them money. 
uncle or auntie. Remember we spoke last, last, um, last week, right? Dependency mentality. Take responsibility over your destiny and make up your mind to be diligent. A lot of people blame God and say, my, my boss is in the same koinonia with me and he can't lift me. He won't lift you because you are a member of koinonia. He will lift you because you are proficient and excellent. Praise the Lord. We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's got to be more than this. You have to preach to yourself. I'm tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. There's got to be more, got to be more. There's gotta be more than this. You must be excellent. You must be excellent. Be exceptional. What you are trusting God to use to feed you. What you are trusting God, the value that you think you are adding to men, be exceptional. You claim God is calling you into the healing ministry. You are, you are average. The last time somebody got healed was five months ago. Right? No pressing... You, don't, you, are not, you are not following the principles. There are so many men of God. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. You give them the mic. They make blunders on stage. No Bible study. Prayer life zero. Right? They are comprehension of the truth. They don't study books. They don't read. They sleep and snore like every other lazy person. You will never be given a ministry. No, sir. Ministry is the highest responsibility in this earth. A president can only rule for four years and, and drop or eight years maximum. A minister is an envoy called to prepare God's people. There are many business people. I want to be a businessman. You write it in your room. CEO. No mastery. No diligence. They talk. They cannot articulate their value. Let me tell you something. If we do not challenge ourselves, we will keep dancing around in church, but Babylon will feed us. And I told you, whoever feeds you is the one you bow to. No matter what you claim to do in church. Joseph. Same story with Daniel. He ran through the dispensation of three kings and he was honored by them individually. Please refuse mediocrity. Challenge yourself. If God speaking to us, challenge yourself. First Kings 11. Let's quickly look at an interesting story again. First Kings chapter 11. Bible talks about an interesting man called Jeroboam. First Kings 11. Twenty six to twenty eight. You will have an encounter of a lifetime tonight, I tell you. Verse 26, are we there? It says, And Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the Ephraimite of Zereda, Solomon's servant, whose, mother, whose mother's name was Zeruah, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hands against the king. Now listen, there's no time to tell us the whole story. But the Bible tells us of the son of this widow called Jeroboam. And he said he was Solomon's servant. He was a servant. But watch what happened, verse 24. It says, and this was the cause that lifted up his hands against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches in the city of David, his father. Verse 28. It says, and the man, Jeroboam, was a what? A mighty man of valor as a result. And Solomon seeing the young man that he was what? That he was what? He didn't say that he was anointed. He didn't say that he was a Jew. He didn't say that he was a male. He said he was a mighty man of valor. Do you know what it means for you to be called a mighty man of valor in ancient times? The Bible talks about the mighty men of David. 
one who fought single-handedly threw down 800 people and a sword cleaved to his hands the bible talked about david of the tribe of benjamin the bible tells us that the benjamites bible history tells us that the, the benjamites were so were so fine in in throwing slings they could diverge an arrow with a sling so it wasn't just that the anointing came upon david to kill goliath the anointing came upon something he had are you getting what i'm saying here the bible says that jeroboam was a mighty man of valor and solomon discerning that he was a mighty man of valor what did he do the bible says in verse 28 seeing the young man that he was industrious advantageous made him ruler over all the charge of the house of jesus seeing that he was industrious he said no 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 you can't be a, a servant just like the other people you are so proficient beyond servanthood and i lift you you are the head of the house of joseph diligence gives god room to bless you mastery shuts the mouth of critics mastery shuts the mouth of naysayers you make the prophecy of your enemies a self-fulfilling prophecy when you waste your time arguing and defending yourself rather than sharpening your sword to gain mastery. Hallelujah. You must be proficient at your place of work, in ministry, in business. Pay the price. Don't run around looking for cheap success. Don't run around looking for quick money. Don't run around trying to claim what you are not. I've said it and I will keep saying it till it burns into you. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. There are so many people who look successful. Like the fig tree that Jesus saw. But when he came, he found no fruit in it. I've made up my mind that in my lifetime, Every area the Lord wants to use me, I will be like a sword that has been sharpened at its finest. Hallelujah. A man of God, God wants to bless you. But there is no grace, no revelation. No, the personal contributions. You go for a meeting, a major conference, and waste the time of the people talking nonsense. And at the end of it, they say, uh, thank you for coming. Here's your honorarium. May the Lord bless you. And they will never invite you again. Never. God open doors. You close them by yourself. Let me tell you. Both in the church and in the secular environment. The minimum standard is exceptional excellence. Minimum standard. Is God speaking to us? You're a hairstylist. Oh God, open the door for me. God is saying to wear. Make room for the blessing. Be proficient enough. Hallelujah. Please challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. There are many music ministers. You wrote a song. There is no standard to gauge the proficiency of the song. You to sing the song and hear what you wrote. Huh? And then, you see, the worst thing that can happen to you is to surround yourself with mediocres who are too ashamed to tell you the truth you come on stage and sing and make a lot of blunders and when you step down they say kai ken ah that song i say really you, you see how you are deceiving yourself we our standards are very small so we we feel a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment too fast because our standards are small you're a man of God. You gauge yourself around with people who don't pray and are not serious. You lay hands on somebody and she falls down and you say emoji. Emoji compared to what? The day you go for a meeting, they bring a blind person. You pretend not to see the person. Praise the Lord. Oh, I have an apostolic. You go for a crusade, you see them. And you know the way, I love the way crusades are. They line the sick people. They are desperate. They say, man of God, there's somebody on the wheelchair here. Did I ask you to bring the person out? Mastery. I love Jesus. 
Don't just think the Holy Ghost came upon him alone. The Bible says at age 12, is that in your Bible? At age 12, Jesus sat down and began to articulate the writings of the prophets. The Pentateuch. This guy began to, he, he began to bombard the scribes and the Pharisees. What sort of boy is this? Don't waste the anointing. The anointing does not fall on nothing. The Bible makes us to understand in the building of the tabernacle, the glory of God never came until the tabernacle was built to specification. The last peg had to be put before they saw the glory of God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Excellence. Excellence in dressing. Excellence in your singing. Excellence as a student. Excellence as a worker. Excellence as a whatever it is you're doing. When people are clapping for you, if you don't run away from that place, you will soon die. Because the people who are clapping are only clapping out their frustration. Right? In a class where there are 100 students, and you write an exam, for instance, if the best student gets 11 over 100, if you do a speech and prize, who will take the first prize? It will be said he took first. Correct? But what grade did he get? Help me. So he can move around saying I'm the best student compared to what standard. Then the day you step out and meet others who are not joking. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. Kabbalah katayaba. A workman who needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Pay attention to diligence. Pay attention to diligence. Don't stop clapping for yourself when it's not time to clap for yourself. Hallelujah. Raise the bar. Thank God you are a local champion. In your community you are the best. See the nations. If you don't make room for the nations, you will never be beyond the nations. That's why there are pastors that will never pastor more than 50 members. More than 100 members. More than 500 members. More than 1,000 members. Because the capacity, they have not made room for the blessing. Is God speaking to us please? Don't just get angry and be frowning at your boss and say this man is so wicked. This guy just got a job. In two months he's promoted him. Proficiency. Proficiency. Closely tied to that, I spoke about laziness. Oh, by the way, Proverbs 22 verse 29 says, See thou a man diligent in his business. It gives you an assurance. It says you will not stand before mean men. Average people. Once you are diligent, it will defy every other barrier and make sure you meet with the kings of that sphere of influence. I've met with people that ordinary my level in life would never qualify me to see them. Not even by accident. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Laziness. Proverbs 10 verse 4. Many young people in Nigeria are lazy. Lazy. Mentally lazy. Spiritually lazy physically lazy we're in a hurry to show quick success we're in a hurry to show that things are working life is not like that the Lord put this in my heart to talk to us about it and I will Proverbs Proverbs what? 10 verse 4 who is there? Some of you are still at Exodus, Proverbs, Proverbs, after Psalms. Proverbs 10 verse 4. It says, he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, a lazy person, no inertia. He becometh poor. The word poor there is not just financially poor. You become bankrupt in every area. Romans chapter 12 verse 11. 
I found a very good scripture for ministers. Romans 12 verse 11. Let's hurry up so we can have time. Romans 12 verse 11. Twelve verse eleven. Are you there? Say amen. One to read. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. It said, not slothful. The word slothful there means laggy. You are not. You are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes. Right? It said, not slothful in business, diligent. Fervent, zealous in spirit, serving the Lord. So you want to serve the Lord, you want to serve his body, you must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something. As you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth. I've tried, but compared to where God wants to take me, the journey is still far. It will help you to humble yourself. Whether the right apostle jakes bishop jakes right it's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting it's a very ugly scenario my goal is that we we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best the head of the head of um technical is here I went to pray for his office at the bio bio what biotech that biotech place and when i went in i looked at his office and i looked at everything i said wow it's not about size it's about content are you getting what i'm saying it's about content at least i know that there is a project that they are on now projects of of hundreds of millions competence when you become competent let me tell you brothers and sisters all of a sudden where you are coming from will never matter Jeroboam the Bible says his mother was a widow meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much but competence please there are many of us here it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents they didn't go to school they done their best don't sit down in the average day and keep forcing your mother your father the poor people doing their best rise up and change your status don't just sing it as a song is god speaking to anyone here i read the story of joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people joseph was 30 years 30 years and as a matter of fact out of that 30 years about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. what he just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches and they will find him and not even ask what is it nobody will ask whatever and say come we are willing to pay you huh? and you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say lord this church I already see my destiny no matter what you saw in your dream 
I guarantee you, if you are not diligent, you won't enter into it. Praise the Lord. You are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to there will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court, you can't arrest them. We, we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. You woke up by nine, I know it's a spirit that, that stops me. Huh? I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. By 8.30, you are strolling around carelessly as if it's your place, as if you are the director. You are, the CEO that will interview you was there by 7. You stroll around, you came late and said, in the name of Jesus, lift up your head. Oh, ye gates. See that? The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long. But the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place. Sharpen yourself. Become exceptional. The Bible says, and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance. When John appeared with uncanny accuracy, he knew that this was Jesus. He said, behold the lamb. Behold the lamb. He didn't mistake in Jesus for John the beloved. He didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who are paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something. You buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room. So that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent. Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. 
Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. No more I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do. That's what my Bible says. It said, do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional. To deliver what is season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed. And I have been graced. I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts, when you refine your abilities. When you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Kabaraka sharpen yourself and then you are ready for the anointing the fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar the fire does not just fall the anointing falls when you are prepared when you are ready then you become relevant 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 i refuse to be relegated and i refuse you and forbid you from being relegated not just because you are a christian but because you do not have what to offer hallelujah my younger brother very brilliant gentleman when he graduated a job was not forthcoming and i looked at him i told him young man just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time.
praise the Lord, for one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best, he gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5,000. I told him, no problem, stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they will know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace and shut the door of the prison forever? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, getting an exact blueprint of his assignment. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20, downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David since. But he had not done his work. Now I found my servant. And with my holy oil have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle. The architect of that construction. He was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you. When God anoints your grace, he will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave, you become a city that is set on a hill that cannot, cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your, play your own part. And tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you. Like Saul, you will go back and they will say, ah, ah. Is Saul also one of the prophets? When did you enter this dimension? Favor is when preparation meets opportunity. It's not magical. It's a formula. And God is calling us. Wipe the tears of your family. Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that. You must make up your mind brothers and sisters. That something must be different about my life. 
Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you and they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and I send you like the foxes of Samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar I've said it again and again that true leadership the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders not maintain followers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry... Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten. But I will be called Pula. Pula. The land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business. Mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Koinonia as you cry upon him he grants you grace Lord you want to change our stories in this season we make room we make room we make room we make room we reject the spirit of laziness Time and chance happen to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence. Exceptional competence. Don't let any man preach you against competence. Incompetence will make you poor. Incompetence will make you angry. Incompetence will make you a failure. Incompetence will make you average. I must stand out. I must stand out in my generation. I must stand out because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says, For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you. Without bias, they will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials, sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. Hallelujah. Insist that you must be touched this night. Insist 
that something must change it doesn't take time it just takes one encounter you came with a lot of challenges don't sit down and waste your time make sure you cry unto god tell the lord exactly what you want tonight go ahead please speak to the lord especially for those standing outside make sure you talk to him see the rain of your love I feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear we see the rain of your love we feel the wind of your spirit now the heartbeat of heaven let us hear so let it rain let it rain would you open the floodgates of heaven let it rain let it rain open hallelujah hallelujah listen i don't care what the issue is let your faith rise right now are you hearing what i'm saying i see sick people all around inside and outside and i see all kinds of people but i want you to know tonight that the god of wonders is still in this place so let hope rise Darkness trembles in your holy light. hands everyone hallelujah listen Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself but for your family members all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for in the name of Jesus I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil every covenant every spell at the count of three let the fire of God separates those people right now one two three those devils 
I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God, I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this ground, I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. Satan, let God's people go. There's no hiding place for the power of God is everywhere. There is no hiding place, not for witchcraft. There is no hiding place. I command judgment. Let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains. Hallelujah. I see a lot of chains. Lift your hands again. I see chains. So many chains. Break. Chains. Listen, some of you, this change has lasted for years and decades. I don't care how long it has been. As you shout that name again, I see many people outside. You will know the chain has broken. That embargo over your family. You will know it when it happens. Because I hear sounds of chains at the count of three. Shout that name again with all your might. And I command that as they shout, May those chains break. One, two, three. Chains of stagnation. Chains. Chains. Break it, take it, break 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 from every chain, I break free chains of sickness, chains of poverty, chains, chains of stagnation. <laughs> I Hear me, listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus. Now over families. Any family. Under the sound of my voice. You have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am. And I command. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families. Shake it, take 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 it, take
Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what seest thou? Zechariah 1 18. It says, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. And they will terrorize those horns. We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. After nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt. And after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full, completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families no matter how long the blood of jesus annihilates the legal hold you have i don't care what covenant you have in the name of jesus therefore i speak to every foul spirit that at the count of three you let them go never to return right now in the name of jesus one two three go 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 out you go out you go out you go never to return out you go by the ministry of the blood by the ministry of the blood I cause you by the ministry of the blood release the families release their finances release their destinies go now go now I compel you by the blood of Jesus that blood opens the gates of captivity. Hallelujah. I declare every family under bondage free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed, we open it now. You will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely healed. Stephanie. Stephanie. I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish first. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like is it four children? Or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours... If it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let us know. If there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. 
Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother, but upon the family. And it's a prophetic call. It's a prophetic call. Right? It's not only your mother. I, didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know you people. But the hand of God is going to come upon you. It's a mighty anointing of the spirit. It will come upon you. Are you part of the family? Huh? You are related. You are what? You are on your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come. Come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? the Lord is going to lift you why am I seeing a ring in your hand I'm not seeing a physical ring but it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring your wedding bells are ringing are you married huh this is what I'm we don't feel embarrassed we are a family marriage is not a bad thing Abi mommy is it a bad thing it's not a bad thing because there is nobody and you are wondering this is what you are thinking in your heart where is the person listen he said we see the fire we see the fire we see the wood where is the lamb and he said jehovah jireh the same word that comes listen listen my dear you don't know me i'm not a herbalist are you getting my point when the lord brings a word he will make it happen my brother this year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does what what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. It is one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? It's a strange opportunity. If you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother, I'm telling you, she's not fake. I'm saying it now because they have been talking about this woman she sees and people have been saying she's fake I'm saying if this woman is fake she will not enter this place I guarantee you except I'm not a man of God please she's not fake what she needs is is the, an, an accurate alignment through the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened she has a lot of prophetic insight but the word level is very low so there is dwindling that stability in the spirit is not there that's all this mama is not fake because i'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing very powerfully come madam come yes, praise to the king. you have taken all the glory you have taken hold hands both of you I show you a mystery. Madila Katabarata. Jembramato Zatali Kaparando Skolapaya. Mambrono Supaya. One will chase a thousand, but two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces right now happening between both of you. It's a drinking together, it's a happy anointing. That is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing drink of that wine right now in the name of Jesus Christ don't be afraid to help her you won't be with her forever but the Lord is going to lift you in due season and you will begin to see in a strange way may the Lord bless you may he anoint you in the name of Jesus Christ I break the embargo of darkness over the family come you're a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. 
light shines in the darkness you must release her let her go now I'm seeing an old woman's face but in the name of Jesus I declare you step into strange dimensions of grace I command deliverance to you right now in the name of Jesus God bless you it's all right I bless this family the Lord changes your story you will return with dramatic testimonies in Jesus name nay we I'm hearing a name of a place there is there's nay we I know it's an evil place right there is there is a there is somebody I, I think a lady or a guy or somebody from that place nay we who is that please if it's your case whether you are outside just make your way so that you don't waste our time please there are so many other people come mama she's your mother what's wrong with her is this working please help us she's having a problem with her legs she's having problem with her legs. knee problems her legs, oh. her legs. Her waist. arthritis no. you don't know yeah. you love god sleep. yes very well. Very well. Yeah? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God? Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's, let's not... Well, it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Left? Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, Chris Graham. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry, it's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me, just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus? I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Lord, praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My come on, give Jesus. Oh, to break every chain, break every chain. Let's go. Come. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Yes. Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You are. You know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? They just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request. Not for money. Many of you ask for money. I will give me money sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. My children are 11 in number. 11? Yes. And I have six graduates. I thank God for what God has been doing in my life. I thank God. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? 
Help us now. Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? What happened to you? Uh, I felt sick last year October when they took me to the hospital. Oh, when was so many examinations. Now they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. Sir. So right now you have cancer. Yes, so they've left you to the, die. Yes, sir. Cuffed the, of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit. Upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs. In the name of Jesus I release strength to these legs right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come, ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy, look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. You know, come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness right now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm looking at an angel walking through this road this is what I'm looking at an angel the Lord wants me to talk to somebody that person will come under the power of God right now when that happens please let me have that person you have taken all the voices you have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made that me yours. Please bring out.
I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now please, all those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. And all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jexa, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen, all of you standing, I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you, the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing. So you must focus. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Elijah said, if you can see me, don't, don't be distracted, please. Hallelujah. Please pass your request. Ushers, let's hurry up, please. Get them to the aisle. Just pass it to the last person. The last person by the side, please. Help the ushers inside and outside. It's not a ritual. There is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place. Please. Begin to pray in tongues as you do that, please. Everywhere. Begin to pray in tongues. All those connecting with us online, it's time for them to connect now so that we can... Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of no no I'm I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter and brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing but in everything. He says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. 
Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long, let's do it very quickly. I have seen God do strange things. Strange things in the lives of people. We have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles. Please, I want you to know the person you are praying to. I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman. It's not to an idol. You are not praying to the president of this nation. The king of kings. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? Myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels, there are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Shaka prato soto bala da bala da bala bala. Hey, se mara na na mosuri na 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 mas. Hey, shapra pakata bala da bala. Rakata prato shupre gede bala da bala. Hey, shabara na 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 mos. Father, hear the prayers of your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother, all kinds of miracles. Supernatural jobs, supernatural lifting. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answer prayer with all flesh Blessed Lord, let every cry, every need, Lord, every pain, Lord, let things that look impossible by men, we pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hitherto, we ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord, the blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs, amazing, blessed jobs, Lord, miracles, miracles, Lord, healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls, calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord, the needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, we ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalah, he said it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God and will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please, I want you to receive as I pray. Shout amen from the depth of your heart. Amen means let it be so. It's an act of faith. Hallelujah. I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family. I say it again. The era of mourning by prophecy. Let mourning end in your life and in your family. Hallelujah. Hear me every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level by the weapon of the prophetic in the name of the Lord Jesus I command those limitations broken human limitations demonic limitations I command them broken now I command them broken now Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next miracle service, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. I prophesy to you, step into those dimensions. Step into those dimensions. Hallelujah. I pray for every student here. Listen, this proverb will no longer be used in your life. Listen. That proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics. In the name that is above all names. We send angels to every department. Of every campus represented here. We send angels to every faculty. May they tear down. May they uproot. Every trace of wickedness. May they tear down. May they uproot. In the name of Jesus. Let missing scripts be found. Let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. There are many people you want to take steps, but fear is keeping you down. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, and to deliver them all through the fear of death have all their lifetime be subject to bondage i cause fear from your life now i cause fear from your life now i cause fear i cause fear, I cause fear in the name of jesus hallelujah i pray for you there are many who have been praying. Lord, reveal to me the purpose of my existence. There are people who have been crying. I don't want to waste my time in destiny. I pray for you. That through a night vision. 
mysterious prophetic encounters may your exact assignment be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ there are people praying right now all you, are, you have come here for is the direction for the next level you just came to get direction I prophesy to you the Bible says and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way I command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the Lord Jesus I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy I connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what I'm saying in the name of Jesus I connect you I connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of Jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus Christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood I break you free from any covenant of infirmity I break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of Jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you. Hallelujah. I pray for your finances. In the name of Jesus. There are many who are giving. You are tithing. You are faithful. But it just looks like when things are about to happen, there are limitations. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare that beginning from next month, I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the Bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet I command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for everyone called dull in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the bible says and he opened their understanding 
that they might understand the scriptures i pray for you may understanding be granted unto you hallelujah favor magaba datala the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now in the name of jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life i bring that confusion to an end now i pray for all those who came here specifically trusting god for the fruit of the womb mazuka parata teleka in fact i pray for you listen not just physical barrenness any area of your life this is the year of the rain and when rain falls barrenness stops therefore i command be fruitful in the name of jesus fruitful multiply replenish subdue and have dominion in the name of jesus i command everything called dead in your life and your family i don't care for how long it has died your health your business your life in the name of the lord jesus i command resurrection right now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you there are people who desire god you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter i pray for you may the angel of the lord's presence visit you you may not understand what i'm saying may the angel of the lord's presence visit you in the name of jesus christ i pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are using that brings bread help her please i pray for you the works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer i put an anointing on your skill i put an anointing i put an anointing on your ability i put an anointing on your gift on your work on your skill may it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension hallelujah now lift your hands i just want to do an impartation there are people who have come from different places please be sensitive we are out of time we will soon round up but it's time to receive something listen listen i told you there will be many impartations hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference are you hearing what i'm saying no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place help her please it's time for you to catch this thing for real it's yours for the taking listen i want to pray as i stretch my hands and pray inside and outside wherever you are you must not be in ministry like fivefold whatever area many of you will begin to have dreams encounters listen many of you will step into healing graces there's no time to move one by one but i'm going it's one of the major assignment god gave me tonight please believe it you will argue it at your own detriment there is a cheap route the help of god is here to lift you the help of god is here to take you lift your hands everybody father i pray that in the next two minutes let there be 
from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces shake it take it take it a protosia dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings leadership anointings leadership anointings i impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 i release it to you utterance in the name of jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance i i release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom i grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah the final prayer i want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed but not honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor that fragrance that compels loyalty that fragrance zamatikalai lord everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside may this grace that that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of jesus I release it from the depths of my heart. Receive it in the name of Jesus. From today, everywhere you go, may honor follow you. And I declare these hands that are lifted, like Aaron, like Joshua, lifted up the hands of his servant Moses. I command, may those hands never go down. May the Lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down. And I pray for marriages supernaturally. May God connect people supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As it is happening to you, let it happen to every one of your family members, no matter where they are. I prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members hallelujah now very quickly you are here you've never given your heart to the Lord please hear me please keep standing everybody no moving around let's honor them just in one minute you're here inside and outside you have never made a decision for Jesus Christ or at one time you have made a decision for Jesus but you found yourself dwindling. You have seen the hand of God and Jesus is calling you back home. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't let any man cajole you. Win the war in your heart today for the sake of your destiny. Wherever you are, please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here. I want to lead you personally to Christ and pray for you. Go ahead. Are there people like that? Go ahead. Don't look at any neighbor. Don't look at anyone. Wherever you are, inside or outside, don't pretend it. Jesus is calling you very quickly. Very quickly. Where are those who are giving their lives to Jesus? 
inside or outside make your way to the front don't be ashamed please appreciate them coin on you as they come god bless you keep coming god bless you keep coming no matter how far rush and make your way young and old god bless you keep coming it's time to make it right don't play games with destiny jesus is calling you come and surrender everything totally and consciously totally and consciously please make way for them don't stop them make way for them come to jesus hallelujah i salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out hallelujah the prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem i want you to pray from the depths of your heart lift your right hand and say after me passionately and truly say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you i believe you died for me you rose again for me i surrender completely to you take charge of my life from today and forever I denounce sin, I denounce Satan, and I receive eternal life into my spirit. Keep your hands lifted. Father, receive these ones. Change them. Transform their lives radically. I cause the power of sin from your life, and I release grace upon you to experience that which Christ has done for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, everything that keeps drawing you to sin, I cause it right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. Please follow the ushers, the gentlemen with the jerseys. They will have your details and you'll be back to your seat. God bless you.